अक्सर आपको जो हमारे सत्तर की दिहाई की हरकियात थी हमारी माशरे की वो आपको नजर आती हैं कि किस तरह एक टूटता हुआ माशरा जो सकूत पाकिस्तान के सानहे से संभल रहा था और उसके साथ साथ हमारे यहाँ जो सियासी कुतबियत या पॉलिटिकल पोलराइजेशन उस वक्त थी वो किस तरह से हमारे माशरे के सोशल और सोसाइटल पहलुओं को मुतासर कर रही थी उसके ऊपर एक कमेंट्री है और उसके अंदर आपको बहुत से ऐसे किरदार देखने को मिलते हैं जो कम्युनिस्ट जिसको हम लोग हम लोग कॉमरेड्स कहते हैं उस तरह के तर्ज फिक्र को भी रिप्रजेंट करते हैं फिर आपको एक ऐसा बैकग्राउंड भी नजर आता है जो हमारा यूजल फैमिली बैकग्राउंड है जिसको हम एक रिवायती पेटियारकल सा पस मंजर कहेंगे और एक हस्बैंड और वाइफ की डायनामिक्स है जो बहुत जो मैं हमेशा सेंट्रल थीम जो है वो वो रिश्ता है जो एक खावंद और उसकी बीवी का है तो उसके अंदर पढ़ते हुए जो चीज़ हमेशा मुझे जिससे बहुत कहते हैं इंट्रीग किया और मैं चाहूँगा कि आज क्योंकि फॉर्चुनेट इनफ टू हैव द क्रिएटर विद अस आई होप यू आर द क्रिएटर Are you asking if it's plagiarized? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> just, just, just checking. So, what is patriarchal in Urdu? What do they say? Padrasari Mosh. Thank you. So, I want to ask you that when you read a such novel, in which the protagonist-writer symmetry is there, that means the protagonist is of the same age group, of the same gender, and of the same background as the writer himself. तो आपको और ये पहला नॉवल हो राइटर का तो यू आर यू आर ऑलवेज सेफ टू ज्यूम के क्या ये एक ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल स्टोरी तो नहीं है क्या ये राइटर ने अपनी कहानी सुनाने की कोशिश तो नहीं की और कुछ नकादों का ये भी ख्याल है कि हर मुसनफ का पहला नॉवल ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल ही होता है किसी हद तक तो ये वो चीज थी जो मैं चाहूंगा कि सादिया जरूर बताए कि उनके अपने जो एक्सपीरियंसेस थे लाइफ के उनकी कितनी इंस्परेशन है इस नॉवल के जो हमारी सेंट्रल कैरेक्टर है उनके लाइफ के जर्नी से कितनी रेलिवेंस है और कितना उससे वो रिलेट कर सकता मेरा मियाँ अंग्रेज था फलसफे में उसने पीएचडी हार्वर्ड से किया था और मेरी शादी 1996 में हुई थी तो इट्स अबाउट एज ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल एज अ नॉवल दैट विजनिया वोट फॉर राइट मीनिंग नॉट एट ऑल इट्स नॉट एंड एंड आई वॉन्ट इट नॉट टू राइट एन ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल नॉवल at all so you you consciously avoided uh, representing yourself in the novel i mean you know mere liye jo zyada important cheez thi na song mein wo thi 1970s mein jo tha thi pata nahi 1970s में नाजामाद में जो एक यूपी का कल्चर था ना और जो और जो और बायोग्राफिकल इस तरह से था कि मतलब मेरे मेरा पूरा खानदान आके वहीं पे सेटल हुआ था और मेरे नाना रहते थे डी सिक्सटी थ्री ब्लॉक एफ आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर दस नॉर्थ नाजामाबाद में दादा यूज टू लिव इन फेडरल बी एरिया सो टू दी एक्सटेंट दैट इट इज और बायोग्राफिकल Right, it's about a neighborhood. Right, very much. So. Right, or for me, it was. And for eight years, I was in that neighborhood. That's why it was because that's when that house was sold, and that house is very important to me. Right, and in the Nazar Abad, the intellectuals were there. They were there. They were there. They were there. They were there. यूपी के थे और तो मेरे लिए वो कराची बहुत अहम था और कराची यूनिवर्सिटी का एक कल्चर बहुत अहम था जो मेरी खाला के साथ में जाती थी राइट सबसे छोटी मेरी जो खाला है और वहाँ पे जो लेफ्टिस्ट से और जो स्टूडेंट मूवमेंट था तो मैं बच्ची थी सेवेंटीज में वो मेरे लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट था तो टू दी एक्सटेंट के And now I'm going to switch to English, and I apologize because Talim apni jagah, but my conceptual language is English, and um, and I don't know chuha mati ya hati aap hai ya. I mean, I will have to figure it out, which I, because I I need to know. Okay, 
चूहा और हाथी बाद में बात करेंगे कौन क्या था या हम दोनों चूहे और हाथी उस बन सकते हैं डिपेंड करता है बता मैं हैप्पी एक्सेप्ट बोथ बाय द वे आई मीन हैव बिट बोथ इन मी बट एनीवे सो द सो द इशू वाज मोर दैट आई एम माय सेल्फ एंड आई आई हैव सेड दिस इन वेरियस इंटरव्यूज अ कंसेप्चुअल एनिमल कंप्लीटली राइट एंड टू मी द क्वेश्चन वाज व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अ नोवेल व्हाट इज अ नोवेल राइट and you could say that the novel the empty room is an anti marriage plot novel like the marriage plot is the it, the one of the forms of the novel in the 18th century i mean it's one of the formative genre, uh, things that that influences the emergence of the novel and the urdu novel as purathal and heather whom we will talk about later um has also documented very well comes out of that english tradition i mean she writes beautifully about it in dastane hate gul right she talks about that history and so to some extent um i wanted to write against the marriage plot uh pehla jumla agar aap padhenge uska wo wo bhi anti marriage plot hai because it starts where most romantic novels end where the marriage plot ends right marriage plots end with the romance res- resolving coming to fruition um and i forgotten what the first line is um uh, bahafa the oh no is um that the first line is the terse knock on the door the morning after the wedding allowed daira to open her eyes right so it's really very much about um the morning after right and to open her eyes right so exactly right so or uh, or or aankhein khol rahi hai right and so you can that's the metaphor for everything right um i mean it's both metaphorical and literal but i literalized the metaphor so so it was anti marriage plot to begin with then the second th- thought was that i did not want to write what is standardly the novel i mean the novel is a, what they say a bourgeois form right it's the middle class form historically and this is where you'll see that i talk like a literary critic about no, my own novel right I and mean, i'm also very much a critic and uh, the bourgeois form is all about the individual's development and i wanted to write about the world i wanted to write about the neighborhood i wanted to write about karachi the city i love very much to this day and uh, and uh, i wanted to write about nazawad and i didn't want to write about the fence i really didn't want to write about the fence so the But part I, of that that part of the city is your protagonist you're saying yeah it's one of the protagonists very much so right. because mujhe matlab mai rehti hu defense mein mujhe like i want i mean i don't find that subjectivity particularly interesting partly because of my own politics i mean mai sirf ke bare mein likh rahi hu agar mai hu bhi na thodi sa वो तो आपको समझ में आ रहा होगा बिल्कुल राइट सो फिर फिर उसमें मुझे मतलब वो आई मीन आई और मेरी मेरी तालीम अंग्रेजी में सिर्फ नहीं हुई है मैंने पीएचडी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर में किया है आई एम अ मिल्टन स्कॉलर राइट अमंग अदर थिंग्स आई एम अ पोस्ट कॉलोनियलिस्ट एंड आई एम आल्सो अ ट्रेंड मिल्टन एंड जॉन डन स्कॉलर राइट माय वर्क इज फुल ऑफ अननेसेसरी कोटेशंस फ्रॉम मिल्टन एंड जॉन डन ट्रस्ट मी राइट एंड जॉन एंड एंड्रू मार्बेल सो So for me that was a protagonist and then the other thing was to do, how do you undo the bourgeois novel right or up or now I'm speaking to people who read urdu literature right so i mean we have a great tradition of of the progressive writers who are all leftists who've been taking that on from all angles but right? they never took the novel as a form they maybe. never took the novel as a form but uh, but but i'm not very obedient i right. don't have to be like them Right. right i did right. So, i'm not them so your re- rebellion is coming in the shape of uh, disobeying the form of norm i i mean i i don't think of it as a rebellion but if that's what you want to call it sure i mean i mean you you could say that uh, that uh, rebellion is my is is there in every molecule of my being right matlab right? but it's not conscious because it's molecular it's not conscious right so i mean for me it was just that i'm तो आपको बुजुआ फॉर्म को आपको कैसे आप या मिडिल क्लास फॉर्म को आपने कैसे डिस्ट्रॉप्ट करना है राइट और तो आप कह रहे हैं कि नाजमाबाद इज एंड कराची इज अ प्रोटैगनिस्ट राइट बट देन यू आल्सो से दैट एन एनसाम्बल इज द प्रोटैगनिस्ट 
right? right. The ensemble is Tahira, to hai, magar Tahira ka bhai hai, Vaseem, Zabdar hai. And, 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 hai. and since we're there, Tahira jo naam hai, Tahira ka naam ki choice, kyunke Tahira ka naam khatoot ek zamane mein hamari jo hai, wo formative years mein badi mashoor kitab rahi hai. Salim ke naam khatoot aur Tahira ka naam khatoot. To wo Murat al-Aruz ki asghari kitna Tahira has that place in our folk ya na to. आप आप मैं जाहिल हूँ आपने मुझे पढ़ा लिखा बना दिया मुझे वो रेफरेंस नहीं थी मगर ताहिरा the pure the purity in the name ताहिर एंड ताहिरा वो सही है सुकरतो लैम ताहिरा is kind of your inspiration it's it's the idea of the name right that that it indicates purity right that it was right let's engage our other speaker if you पलवशे मैं आपसे पूछना चाहूँगा कि जो नोवेल एम्पी रूम है उसको जाहिरा आपने भी पढ़ सबसे दिलचस्प चीज आपको क्या लगी कि किस किरदार को आपने देखा कि वो एक और क्योंकि आप सादिया को बहुत पहले से जानती हैं तो कौन सा ऐसा किरदार था जिसे देखते हुए आपने सोचा कि ये किरदार मैंने रियल लाइफ में देखा हुआ है जो सादिया ने कागज के ऊपर रीक्रिएट किया। Think I'm going to not immediately address your question but perhaps respond to something that Dr. Abbas was saying about writing a novel that is an anti-marriage plot novel and that is a question and that is a you know a statement that concerns itself with form and genre also i am going to be monolingual for the majority of this panel so please also do forgive me if i had known i would have come a little more prepared um but coming to the question of an anti-marriage plot novel i think one thing that is also very apparent or one of your the preoccupations that perhaps you're writing not just the fiction but the non-fiction shares with kuratala and heather is um an interest in the form of ex, uh, ex uh, you have to help me with this ex phrases ex, uh, exactly um and i was just sort of wondering if you could not only just situate that form and tell let us uh, sort of historically situate it a little bit but also perhaps elucidate how that has been instrumentalized not just in uh, the empty room but also in kurutan and heather's own writing so ex phrases jo hai uh, that is the representation of visual art in writing, right? In liter in 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 usually in in literature and I mean in, in novels and short stories, but also in poetry. Um, I love the visual, and uh, for me, it is uh, a, you know uh, the the two things. That I really wish I could do: sing. I love music as well. I have a terrible voice, and paint. Painting, I started only because I wanted to share my experience with Tahira. I was trying to sort of experience the world the way Tahira was experiencing it. Right? What does it feel like to hold a brush? Right, so I started painting just to do that, and now I do paint a little, a little right? Just, just to add perspective, Tahira, her novel central character is a woman who paints. Who paints. As a she hobby, does. and then she finds her liberty in that painting. Yeah, it's not, she's not a, it's not a hobby. I mean, she, it's, it's actually, she, she's an artist. I mean, she, it's her passion. It's her vocation. She's an actual okay. painter. I mean, she's, she's always going to be a professional painter, right? I mean, they, that, that's... Uh, but but it's रुक जाता है क्योंकि शादी हो गई और शादी ना खुश है और generally unhappy you know she's just miserable so so how do women create is the question and how do women create in a prison is actually the big question of the novel right and that prison is the prison not just that is made for us but how do women create in prisons that they make for themselves. Right, a translation by Hishti Zewar ka, by the way, because the novel is in it, Hishti Zewar ka references. A translation is called "Perfecting." I think it's called "Perfecting Your Perfecting a Prison" or something. Barbara Metcalf has translated it. Right, so so part of it is that, ah, and and that's not just here in Pakistan. I mean, this is a is bad ka ek epigraph hai. So usme. Uh, that's from a novel from the, I think it was the late 1950s. And I was teaching a course in Michigan in the early 2000s. 
on women in the 20th century. And they're all talking about what it was like in the late 1960s and early 70s to um, uh, suddenly have gotten educations, right? And to be expected uh, uh, suddenly, then to become traditional married women. Okay, I mean, first generation to go to Cambridge. Magar phir aapki, aapne bache paida ki aur aapki, aapki scholarship hatam ho gai. Yeah, confiscated okay, by it writes about that, right? And in her preface to her first novel. So to me, what was really interesting was that this is 1969. Here are riots here. Here are right? Government called Lahore say Lumumba ke, uh, ke, ke assassination pe uh, log nikal rahe hain, pe, right? Karachi University mein bhi ho rahe hain, uh, protests, revolution ho rahe hain pe bhi. And it's being quoted in texts in America, right? I mean, I found a, a black radical text from Newark where they're quoting. You mentioned the Lotus in the novel. And well. I mentioned the, Lotus, mentioned, yeah. the, the great left wing journal in the novel and in the 70s. And that black radical is telling me today in America that, they, they, that Pakistan is an inspiration for them. Right? So. But, the, but these women are being educated in this milieu and then suddenly they're supposed to go back into these highly traditional marriages. And it's happening all over the world. It's not just happening here. And then after that, if you are creative, how do you do it? Right? So part of what I was trying to do, and this is the, coming back to Palushya's question, uh, is that you've got the empty room and so you have Taira here and Taira is a very kind of repressed, intense person, just need to jo jo up ke jo traditions hai na, ke apne aap ko aap bilkul apne andar band kar lehen, right? So, jo hum sab ko skaha gaya tha, aap pooch rahe, what is, what is, uh, what is um, autobiographical, what is autobiographical is that we were all raised like this, right? All us UP women, even of my generation, right? When, yeah, I mean, the repression is, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I can't speak for the men, but I mean, if you wanted to say that, maybe you guys were repressed too. I mean, I'd like to see more repression from the men, but I haven't seen it yet. So, uh, uh, I can speak for the women, right? So, we have taught us that we don't want to ask, we don't say anything, we don't say anything, we are just, we are, 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 we so uh, it did inform it, absolutely. And so the question was, so Paira comes into this, right? And she believes in this stuff. She actually believes in it, right? So my question was, okay, so how does a person who believes in all of this live in this live this life, right? So what she does is she, with a painting me or you said, local inspiration, Rukia, and I write his blog post, acute for some time, the visual version. So she starts arranging the world into paintings, right? I said, Usme ye hai ki this is the opportunism of the novelist. She's arranging the world into paintings, and what does Sadia get to do? She gets to write about the world as if it's a painting because she can't paint. <laughs> right? So I get to write about color, and color becomes my medium, right? And the original title of the novel was actually a change of color, which the editor made me change, right? To the empty room, right? And of course, I'm, I'm from Pakistan. So, I'm from Pakistan. Right? So, when I first got to the US, I was dying. Like, I, mean, I, I call landing in New York a static death. Right? Because there's no color. And here it's just excess. Right? Beautiful excess. Right? So, how do you arrange excess into form? And it's a very disciplined novel, right? Because it's a novel about discipline, right? So it phrases becomes for me that. So then coming to Kurutula and Heather, right? So Kurutula and Heather, are, on the one hand, I'm this leftist. On the other hand, Kurutula and Heather gets so much guff from the progressive writers because she's not radical enough and all of that. On the other hand, I think she's one of the greatest. And I don't use the word great very often or lightly, right? But such a great theorist. Of South Asian modernity. But have you experienced Kurotul and Heather in Urdu? Yes. That, that's the key question. I have, did you read my article? Yeah, I have. I have. All right. Well, then, if you read them, 
carefully, yeah. then you would have noticed that I'm actually comparing the Urdu with English. Yeah, I know. Right? That's your primary thesis, the transcreation <laughs> of, <laughs> of the Urdu and English. <laughs> Right. So I have read her in Urdu. So I mean, I'm not a total charlatan. <laughs> Maybe a partial one, but thank you. So I have read her in Urdu. And one of the things that's so interesting about, for instance, Akhare Shabki Ham Safar versus uh, um, Fireflies is, is, let's just take that one. Akhare Shabki opening, I have a book that I have not read. This is my house. नहीं मगर उर्दू की मैं घर पे रखी हैं न्यूयॉर्क में मगर अमित जी आखिर शब्द की जो की जो ओपनिंग है वो इतनी मतलब रिस्ट्रेन्ड और खूबसूरत है आस पास में किया है but it's not historical right it's it's a beautiful description of a decaying mansion of a decaying house right fireflies is just three god knows like two new chapters of history right so it's a completely different it's a completely different way of writing Not less so in akadarya but so she's a in both texts i mean but especially in akadarya in urdu and in english she's a theorist she's also a philosopher she's philosophizing about south asian modernity through the history of south, of of the of or the prehistory of south asia right which people don't in my view talk about enough so But then I also found out, and and she's a visual writer herself. She's talking about ruins. She's talking about um, um, uh, the Sundarshan Yakshi. The the, the 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 she's talking about the statues. She's talking about the museums. But when I started research, or when I started, I saw that she's really engaging with the whole history of of um, of. Uh, the representation of sculpture and art in india including through malak rajananda and stella kamrish and the ye jo do chapters hain ye ye meri jo current kitab hai uski aakhri chapter ke se excerpts hain yeah which is not about uh, not just about kurutla and heather it's actually connecting uh, derek walcott and some greek writings of the caribbean north america uh, greece and and india so when you are reading empty room uh, the influence that you feel kurukul and heather obviously is one of them mm-hmm. but there is a strange influence that you feel that is um, ar khatun jab aap empty room padhe hote hain to aapko mehsoos hota hai ki jo ar khatun ke novelon ka atmosphere hai jisko baad mein bajia ne apne ptv ke dramon mein bahut dafa dhala hai wo aapko bahut jagah isme nazar aata hai to us us cheez ka kahan se aapke paas aaya love it love it ar khatun ke through nahi bajia ke It's all about beautiful. It's the Urdu drama. It is the Urdu drama. You beautifully spotted. Absolutely. जो शमा वगैरह टाइप जो थे ना सारे जो ड्रामे खा ब्लैक एंड वाइट ड्रामा. Absolutely. बिल्कुल सेवेंट. I love seventies people. लेकिन उस दौर के जो लेफ्ट के राइटर हैं चौकत सदीकी उनका इन्फ्लुएंस यहाँ पे नहीं है. नहीं नहीं. Because I was putting two things in in in. It's a clash. It's an ideological clash. It's a novel about. You know, one of the questions was, "K." I'm sorry, we're off the egg process question again. But, 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 but I do want to say one thing about presses, and I'll come back to your question, which is, "K." So Raza Rumi told me, right, that he went and visited uh, Rotel and Heather, and uh, and she she loved the fact that he wanted to talk about Akhir Shabki Ham Safar because nobody was engaging her Bengali, the the the, the novel about the Bengal. And he also told me that he painted it himself. And she would sometimes paint her scenes, which I did not know when I started writing about her. So expresses becomes very interesting, right? Because she would actually paint, and then she would write, and then and she was obviously very interested in no, the. No, but visual. I mean, I think it's really apparent in both your and her works that there's a shared vocabulary of visuality or the visual arts, right? So, बिल्कुल वो तो नहीं रहता. If you would have read the criticism that this much Jyotai leveled on any of us, जब वो pom pom darling लिख रही थी तो उसमें उन्होंने mention किया. The, the painting she, she did but then some people have also argued that 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 jhagla also was then got resolved eventually yeah right 
that that it was uh, but but wo bhi tha but on on unhone dasane hai the gul mein raja ravi verma ke bare mein jo likha hai just which i write about in that chapter but then there's also another uh, essay jo I mean, asif faruqi ne collect kiya tha dasane hai the gul mein wo ye tha uh, art ki kahani jisme puri puri history hai aur bahut 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 matlab i mean it's 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 this kind of compendious uh, engagement but ek sawal जो जिससे एम टी रूम शुरू भी हुआ था ना लाइक वो ये था कि वट हैपन क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ तो जब शादियाँ करवाते हैं राइट तो वो तो ये देखते हैं ना कि लंबा कौन है और छोटा कौन है और काला कौन है और गोरा कौन है और बच्चे कैसे ब्रीड होंगे और अगर काले कैसे गोरे को मैच कर दिया तो In the 70s, UP household, it was all about के कहाँ से आया किस बात से है किस family का है वो भी है वो भी है मगर ये गुफ्तगु है मैं सुनी है कि मेरा जो बेटा जरा काला है तो गोरी भी ढूंढ दो साथ में और UP के मतलब बरेली के हैं तो मीरठ से आ जाएं तो वहाँ से हो जाए तो ये ये सब भी है right कि मोहल्ला कौन सा था और ये भी है और और थोड़ा ये भी है कि मेरा बेटा जरा काला है तो गोरी बेटी से मतलब you know we're breeding goats apparently but anyway so the point is that uh, but the other but the questions that never get asked or and uh, they didn't get used to get asked and I, i'm not sure they still do what about ideological difference right because ek jo jumla mujhe abhi tak yaad hai i mean before they all gave up on me right which was early you know the 15 saal ki umar mein maine batmeezi karna shuru kar di thi और मैंने इस बहुत स्ट्रेटेजिक बदतमीजी करना शुरू कर दी थी ताकि कोई कभी ना सोचे कि स्ट्रेटेजिक बदतमीजी दैट्स फॉर नीलोफर आल्सो राइट स्ट्रेटेजिक बदतमीजी इस तरह से कि मतलब अगर इसको पहले ही बदतमीज डिक्लेयर कर दें तो कोई इससे शादी नहीं करेगा राइट मैंने एक होती है स्ट्रेटेजिक बदतमीजी बहुत लड़कियों ने किया राइट और मैंने बहुत स्ट्रेटेजिक बदतमीजी की ठीक है अगर अगर कर लो तो वो सब कह देंगे कि ये तो गई गुजरी है सोचो इससे कोई शादी नहीं करेगा राइट तो और और करवाने की कोशिश भी ना करो क्योंकि क्या होगा थोड़ा खानदान का नाम खराब होगा ना बदला बदला भी होगी तो बट बट द क्वेश्चन दैट आई फाउंड सो इंटरेस्टिंग वाज यू नो बट बट द लाइन वाज कि शादी हो जाएगी एंड यू विल ग्रो इनटू योर हस्बैंड्स पर्सनालिटी ये जुमला सुना अगर आपने नहीं सुना है तो आप लोग बड़े लकी हैं मगर ये होता था जुमला कैन यू से दैट इन उर्दू जो एक्चुअल जुमला था उर्दू में जो कहा जाता था जब शादी हो जाएगी तो शोहर के सांचे में ढल जाओगे नहीं जुमला अंग्रेजी में और उर्दू में दोनों में था बड़ा बड़ा हाइब्रिड जुमला था ये राइट तो तो मैंने तो दोनों मैंने तो मिक्सचर सुना था ग्रोइंग द पर्सनालिटी मे बी आई ट्रांसलेटेड इट बिकॉज़ आई फाउंड इट टू मगर वो होगा ढल जाओगी सांचे में या ढल जाओगी पे रुक जाए सांचे की जरूरत क्या ढल जाओगे इतनी उर्दू आती है ढलने से आगे आपको जरूरत क्या है तो आप ये सोचें कि तो ये कि आइडियोलॉजी का क्या करें सो व्हाट आई वाज इंटरेस्टेड इज व्हाट हैपेंस व्हेन पीपल फ्रॉम टू डिफरेंट आइडियोलॉजीज मैरी राइट दैट वाज द क्वेश्चन फॉर मी एज वेल एंड एम्प्टी रूम इज योर अटेम्प्ट योर आंसरिंग अटेम्प्ट टू दैट फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन व्हाट आर द क्वेश्चंस One is how do you write an uh, an anti anti marriage plot novel? The, another question is uh, how do you create in a suppressed environment? In a, how do you create in that kind of environment? The other question was quite frankly, um, I chose not to live this life, but so many of my cousins did. All said, these questions are concerning an individual, and you said your novel was not. No, they're not concerning an individual. They're concerning people. The whole life. society. they're concerning the lives that in people live as individuals in a society yeah. they're not concerning an individual they're concerning what makes people it, it, they're concerning the phenomenology of society for individuals which means that they are about the hands that are dealt to us collectively that we navigate ostensibly as individuals those are not we we think that they are individual choices but they're not I mean, they just can't be right i mean there's nothing individual about that choice hum jab aapki jab aapko bata diya gaya hai ki aap aap ki shaadi ho gayi hai 
और आप नहीं छोड़ सकते हैं it might be a 200 year old inheritance it might be a 500 year old inheritance but it it can i mean it, it's normative it's social right and so and then the other question was uh, how do you and for me another question which is a very difficult question for for and it it sounds like the easiest question from from, from my perspective it was the hardest one you've never met this guy you've just slept with him sorry i don't know if this is fahash or not or whatever but and uh, that's your first encounter now you have to get up the morning after and you have to get to the bathroom and then to the kitchen how do you do that for me that was an impossible question i didn't i didn't choose that life right but women do it every day in this society and this culture and to me that was kind of impossible to imagine Right? I mean, it was such a question, and how do you? And as a writer, even if people do it every day, to represent it as a writer is such a difficult thing, right? That's your first encounter. It's going to set everything for the rest of your life, right? And so the question is, how do I get Tahira from the bedroom to the kitchen in the first, in the first day? On the first day, that was my question, right? And that to me was a question of imagination, devilishly hard. right is bahut sare like you get the high drama is easy itni choti si baat jo hai na bahut mushkil hai so those are the kind of questions and i thought i would write a novel that would never leave the house aur mujhe ghutan hone lage to book 3 mein main maine usko darwaza khol diya sare maine ensemble bana diya and then i say that i copped out i failed okay that the novel is a failure at some level it's a it's a happy it did not failure. turn out to be the way you wanted well it was more that I, it was a failure because i copped out i didn't write it i mean i turned out better than i wanted i love the i actually love the novel i think it's fine i mean i just can't hate it but i kind of like it but I, i i'm not saying it's a good novel i'm just saying i like it so i have a question this and given that we are also talking about heather alongside your work yeah. um did you ever actually think of um transcreating or translating it yourself or has anybody ever offered given that it also does represent such a specific point in time and uh, you know such a sp- uh, specific sort of um, iteration of up culture my fantasy so, yeah what please my do tell me. fantasy do tell me. my real fantasy was to write a bilingual version agar meri agar main itni jahil na hoti to main बाइलिंगुल वर्जन लिखती एक पेज उर्दू का होता है एक अंग्रेजी का होता है आई एम नॉट अ टूरिस्ट आई डोंट बिलीव इन मोनोलिंगुअलिज्म आई थिंक हाइब्रिडिटी इज द वे टू गो सो आई डोंट सी व्हाई नॉट तुम तो हां यू हैव टू कैन स्ट्रगल बोथ हां मदर हां या मैं ये मतलब मुझे चाहिए था मुझे मेरी जबरदस्त फैंटेसी थी कि मैं उर्दू लिखूं एक पेज एक पेज उर्दू का हो और एक अंग्रेजी का हो और मैं तो भाई अब अब मैं करना क्या चाहती हूँ मैं कुछ वक्त गुजारना चाहती हूँ पाकिस्तान में मुझे पूरी मुझे पूरी किताब लिखनी है कुरतुल हैदर पर अंग्रेजी में मगर <laughs> उर्दू पे आप वहीं पटके में मगर हम मगर अगर वापस उधर आ सकते हैं भैया <laughs> it could be it's not because i'm i'm not that interested in the empty room anymore my next novel is actually about a gora and it's about the suppression british suppression of uh, colonial history in kenya and malaysia and it's about counter insurgency to mera masla ye hai ki main bore ho jati hu aur mujhe apne aap pe itni jalsi nahi hai ki main apni baith ke apni novel ke sath baith jaun so you you will be willing to trans consider trans creating the new novel to know the you know that phenomena of translation that you're writing about i'm not put to line heather i'm not i have no interest in channeling other people i have tremendous i have tremendous respect for her but like i have no desire to be her like i really don't i think she's greater than i'm ever going to be and i'm really glad that she exists but okay. dear like do i want to be her no not in a billion years and, and what will be your inspirations other than put to line heather in urdu urdu literature I, there are no inspirations but like if, if you could take more questions from her that'd be great too but uh 
part of what I uh, what what I want to do is I just want to write a monograph on Perkins and Heather's further fiction. That's all I want to do, and I want to spend I want to spend some time um, writing a book about her. Huh, that's all I want to do. So what I want to do is spend some time in Karachi University if I can with Urdu scholars, so I can read Urdu literary criticism. It'll be written in English. And I'm actually not, I want to be very clear. Um, the only reason I apologized for speaking in Urdu was because this is an Urdu, generally an Urdu session and forum, right? And if I spend more time here and I get more immersed in Urdu, I'd like to be able to speak in Urdu. I'm not apologizing for the fact that I speak English. And I don't want anyone to think that I am. It is an accident of my birth, but I'm not apologizing. So building yeah. on that point and coming towards Kurutala and Heather's right. trans creation yeah. of Akadaria, you made a really interesting observation um, in your essay, which is trans creation and post-colonial knowledge. You say here on page 286, um, in her hands, translation becomes a tool of meta-thought, meta enabling a reflection on the earlier original text. And you know, I think I've heard you also say that a lot of people don't really consider the sort the sort of theorizing that uh, Heather is doing alongside narrativizing in her work. So could you speak to that a little more as well? Yeah, I mean, so the current book that I'm writing is actually called Revenant Ruin, right? So Revenant is a very weird word to use. It used to be called space in another time. Revenant means to raise from the dead, right? So Revenant Ruin, um, Post-Colonialism and the Management of Life. It's a very strange title. Um, it's actually about how ruins have been used um, in border, uh, border making discourses and in um, ethnic and racial discourses across the world, right? So, and the model for that is Greek antiquity, right? This is just this idea that European civilization is superior because Greek antiquity is uh, what makes, is the greatest, it's the origin of all great civilization, Tika. And uh, we are, um, you know, and, and, and the Europeans always say that they come from there, right? That, that's that. And, and, and part of what I got interested in tracking, largely because I ended up spending a lot of time in Greece. I just want to be very clear. I find ruins completely uninteresting. And uh, Acropolis may be quite interesting. So, uh, and all I remember is that I was like, Zeus or Athena ki hai na, ke, matlab, Athena came out of Zeus's head. So, Sarah Patata, Zeus ka Sarah Madar Dora, Athena Bharnakini. So, Bachman Mavan is Suniti, or Acropolis Makani. So, Mujay Patani Salo Jotina, um, uh, Skebad, um, Mujay, um, like, whatever a Havat, Sarah Patra or Kuban Gallery. Right, so that's what I thought of, like the Acropolis and this great thing that in Athens. So, I had no interest in the ruins. Lesbos, I had to go to Athens. And in Lesbos, it was that in Lesbos, which is now my home, I mean, it's one of my homes now, Mollybos, this village. There are every place there are Ottoman fountains, in which there is Arabic written, and there is a Byzantine castle in which there is written in Bismillah. Right? This made no sense to me. So suddenly everything started spinning in my head, right? Then what happened was that I, uh, so I started thinking, and it started spinning my entire education inside out, right? And uh, because Europe then suddenly started seeming, there's a whole Muslim presence, there's an Eastern presence, and then I started, then I bought a book, which is neither Greek nor Indian, which is written 
स्टार्टअप्स में रिलीज की जो है मेमेड में गाँव खरीदे क्यों मैंने इसलिए खरीदे क्योंकि मैं आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू रीड अबाउट बेसिकली नॉर्थन यूरोपियन राइटिंग अबाउट ग्रीस आई वॉन्ट टू रीड अ लोकल ग्रीक राइटर तो कहाँ से खरीदी मैंने वो जो बीच गाँव में ना जो एक छोटा सा बुक स्टोर था जो बंद हो गया है तो वहाँ पर बाहर लिखी थी टूरिस्ट के लिए तो वो मैंने खरीद ली पढ़ने के लिए ही टर्न आउट टू बी ग्रेट ग्रीक मॉडर्निस्ट आई एम फैसिनेटर उसको मैंने ट्रैक करना शुरू किया तो उसमें एक लाइन ट्रांसलेटेड नहीं थी मैं अब मैं थोड़ी थोड़ी बात ग्रीक पढ़ भी लेते हैं फिर मैं सीखी मैंने मगर उसमें एक लाइन ट्रांसलेटेड नहीं थी अबाउट ही वॉज लाइक अ मुसलमानोस नाम स्पीकिंग ग्रीस मुसलमानोस काले गैरोस अ मुस्लिम मंक इन अस सो दे ट्रांसलेटेड एज अ मुस्लिम दे ट्रांसलेटेड एज अ मुस्लिम मंक no as a as a bebe in a teke is how they translated it in english mere ye dede kya aur teke kya samajh mein nahi aaya to jab maine usko track karna shuru kiya to pata chala that it was actually turkish for a sufi father and teke is a sufi lodge i did not know this so i started tracking sufis bektashis and mevlavis across europe right didn't know any of this right and when i started going to lesbos people were saying salam to each other in on this greek island right and how the food okay then what happened was that we pehle saal jab gaye to we went to stalas kemnia now this has now become a borderline in the whole refugee crisis and the novel is also about my uh, sorry the book is also about migration and border making so we went to a fish restaurant and wahan pe halwa lai what they call halwa so there's the halwa which is one of the dry stuff you'll have but then there's the other thing which is basically suji ka halwa i'm like i'm sitting in greece in an island and wo they're giving us suji ka halwa the difference is and it's exactly like my nani's halwa except the only difference is ke hamari yahan jo hai ilaichi padti hai unki yahan jo hai cinnamon par padti hai darjeeling padti hai right and i was like what the hell just happened here right so i'm totally baffled right Then what happens is, so I start teaching all this stuff, and then I start teaching Kafrazal and Heaven, and I am trying to figure out why she's got a Greek traveler in her English translation. Because जो बंदा Greek traveler है जिसको यावना कह रही है वो अंग्रेजी में वही बंदा हरी हरी शंकर उर्दू वर्जन में उसने नारंज रंग का बुद्धिस्ट नाउन पहना हुआ है और वो मेम्फिस और जावादीप जा रहा है और अंग्रेजी वर्जन में वो कह रहे हैं वो टैक्सला टैक्सला और कापडोचिया और थैसली जा रहा है सो व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन राइट सो व्हाट हैपेंड वाज हियर आर टू अनट्रांसलेटेड वर्ड इन टू डिफरेंट बुक्स राइट एंड दे सेंड मी ऑफ ऑन बेसिकली अ काइंड ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रेजर हंट देयर हैव टू डू विद द फैक्ट दैट आई डोंट गेट इट and i'm i get very 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 rattled when i don't get something it's got because it's the most fun when you don't know something and you want to learn because that's the whole point of doing what you do otherwise what's the point of becoming a professor right like when the, not look uh, do something that's actually going to make you some money right when i can galone ko ek hi fayda hai na ki aap padhne hai seekh rahe hain so i started looking it up and so what i realized the more i read heather was that she had an entire theory of south asia in her work it was a philosophical theory and then in her translations she had a theory so what had started out in the urdu versions as a critique of partition and that's why the comparison between the urdu and the english became so interesting right ye jo unne so jo bhi tha 55 when did she complete aap kar diya 59 55 whatever it is but by the 1990s right what had started out as a critique of partition which in the 70s she extends to the secession of bangladesh right or the east pakistan which becomes bangladesh um had become a critique of hindutva of hindu nationalism that the translations were actually a critique of of what was happening happening in india chali to gayi wo wapas magar jo hindu nationalism tha na aur jo ab jo ho raha hai which just ke ab full fruits dekh rahe hain that's what the translations were doing that they were critiquing them. 
and that she had a theory about this. So then I started tracking it more, and then I realized that Fireflies in the Mist, which is the last of our translation, in um, she was... Um, she was striking this back to colonial history, that this was about Fort William College and the Asiatic Society of Bengal, right? And that she had an entire theory about this, right? So then what that ended up doing for me was setting the parameters of my book, that she became, she and Derek Walcott, who had a different theory of ruins, between the two of them, they ended up providing the way that I was going to think about my book on ruins, right? And I now say in my current introduction or prologue that they are the two major theorists for me, that I'm actually taking the theorization of my work from two writers, Oratul and Heather, from the global south, well, the south, the Caribbean is not the south, but two non-white writers, Two post-colonial writers, Bertel and Heather, and um, and uh, Derek Walcott. So when I say meta thought, yeah, philosophical, I mean, that she's producing a critique on her own work. I think what she's saying is that Urdu se Angrezi mein jab badalti hain aur jo jo tabdiliyan ki hain unhone, ham to wahi atak jaate hain na ki Urdu better thi, Angrezi itni achhi nahi hai, Angrezi ki novel kharaab kar di. अगर बहुत लोगों ने मुझसे कहा है ये अगर किसी और को दे देती तो बेहतर होता क्यों किया राइट व्हिच इज फाइन यू कैन हैव दैट व्यू ऑथेंटिक नहीं है व्हिच इज फाइन बट टू मी व्हाट्स रियली इंटरेस्टिंग इज द व्हाई शी मेकिंग दोस चेंजेस एंड एंड देन द मोर आई ट्रैक देम इट वाज द मोर आई फाउंड दैट देयर वाज अ कंसिस्टेंसी इन द चेंजेस एंड द कंसिस्टेंसी वाज ऑल अबाउट ए द स्टेटस ऑफ उर्दू इन इंडिया आफ्टर पार्टीशन Right? What had happened to Urdu? What was happening to Muslims? What the rise of Hindu nationalism, the separation between between Hindus and Muslims, and how it all went back to Fort William College and the and what the Orientalists did now. So could I ask you a quick question here? Because I think you say this, right? You say that so if the Urdu novels offered a critique of partition, the English translations take that critique forward in post-colonial and back in colonial time to produce a critique of the degradation of the post-colonial state and its continuation and hypostatization of the colonial ta uh, taxonomy. So the question I would ask you is that like if Aad Ka Daria has been written in 1959, River of Fire, she translates in 98, aside from just the question of the shift in language, obviously, do you think they're like two, I mean, not entirely different uh, texts in and of themselves, but that the changes that you're talking about are like move beyond just language and that they're quite strategic, the, the discrepancies be between both texts, that they're, that it's almost like a remixed version as the kids would call it of the original, like it's not, oh, yeah. it's, it's not intended as a translation, you know, it's at absolutely, all. absolutely, like it's an entirely different beast in, in a sense. You know, Kum, Kum Kum Sangari, the Indian critic, called it the configural mode. She said you have to read both of them together. So different beast come in. I mean, it's remix hai, different beast hai, but yeah, but yeah, remix to hai, different beast come in. Right? I mean, like in the sense ke, I, I can't answer that. I honestly don't know, right? Because did she leave anything by way of letters or anything that sort of explained the difference in processes behind both you know, books? I have not found anything yet. What I'm hoping is that if I write a book on her, I'll find it, right? And I'll sit down with archives. But my sense is that um, the hint is in the Avana. My sense is that you say that I mean, if you go and see that. जब मैंने यावना को ट्रैक ट्रैक करना शुरू किया ना लव्स को तो फिर बहुत कुछ खुलने लगा राइट बिकॉज यावना इट टर्न्स आउट इज संस्कृत फॉर आयोनियन राइट अच्छा आयोन जब रोमिला थापर को मैंने पढ़ा तो पता चला कि 
Yavana کہتے تھے جو invaders آئے ہیں from the west Greeks Alexander وغیرہ کو مگر مسلمانوں کو بھی پھر Yavana کہتے تھے because the Muslims came from the west as well right پھر جب میں نے اور research کی تو پتا چلا کہ جو ہیڈگوار تھے جو RSS کے ہیں جنہوں نے جو 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 ہندو ہندوتوا کی جو ہندو نیشنلزم کی جو پرائمری آرگنائزیشن ہے تو انہوں نے ایٹ سم پوائنٹ مسلمانوں کو یاون اسنیکس بولا رائٹ بیکاز وی آر دا یاونی اسنیکس رائٹ اینڈ دس از ان دا مڈ سین ان دا مڈل آف دا ٹوئنٹی ایٹ سینچری پھر یہ دیکھا کہ فور ولیم میں جب آپ دیکھیں تو للو جی لال تھے جنہوں نے پرائمر لکھا ہندی پہ تو وہ کہہ رہے ہیں کہ ہندی میں سے یاونی بھاشا کو نکالیں آپ رائٹ آل وچ از کوڈیڈ ان ویریس پارٹس آف دیس ایسیز بٹ آلسو ان دا فائنلی ان دا چیپٹر دیٹ اسٹ گوئنگ ٹو دا بک تو انہوں نے کہا کہ یاونی بھاشا کو نکالیں آپ تو یا تو I think what she does is that she basically works in, I mean, I don't know if it's a new beast. I mean, it's certainly something, mm-hmm. right? That she gives you a whole history of the way in which the, the history of the production of the separation of Hindi and Urdu, the pulling apart of Hindustani is, is, a colonial invention, right? And how, at a certain point in the 20th century, basically, UP may say, Urdu ko nikala gaya. Now, remember that this is, that UP is the ground zero of Hindutva, right? I mean, it is, it is where they are fighting it all out, right? With Ayodhya and all of that, right? So UP has become the space. And I think the devastation of UP and of the culture of North India, the Muslim culture of North India was something of, I mean, it was a great tragedy for her. It really devastated her. And I think that that's part, I mean, she left partly Pakistan because she didn't like, and one of the things she did say, right, was that, 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 uh, uh, given the audience here, but that uh, Urdu is a, a commodity culture in Karachi. Mein. That's one of the things she said, particularly about, about the UP people here, right? About, so, so, and she was a bit distasteful about that, right? So, but she, and she went back, I mean, partly because she said, once she wrote Akka Dariya and she got the response that she did, she wasn't really allowed to come back and the Nehru greeted her so warmly and so on. Magar, وہاں پہ جو ہو رہا تھا آئی مین یو پی کا جو ڈیوسٹیشن تھا اینڈ آف کورس نیلوفر سٹنگ ہے نیلوفر از دیٹ ونڈرفل بک ود مہر آف روز اباؤٹ دا کمپلیٹ ڈیوسٹیشن آف یو پی تو آئی تھنک یو نو اینڈ دین دا بابی مسجد تھنگ ہیپن رائٹ سو آئی تھنک وین آل آف دیٹ گاٹ ورک دین اینڈ شی واز ٹرائنگ ٹو ریلی گیو این اکاؤنٹ آف دا ڈسٹرکشن آف دا مسلمس آف انڈیا اینڈ یاونا بیکمز دا تھنگ رائٹ اینڈ جب اور میں نے بہت سیکھا جس ٹرائنگ ٹو فگر آؤٹ آئی مین سو دس از مائی فلولوجیکل ورک لائک دا کریٹیکل ورک ایز اے لٹریری اسکالر جس ٹریکنگ دیٹ رائٹ اس اس لفظ کو کی جینیالوجی ڈھونڈتے ہوئے آئی ہیو ٹو فائنڈ سو مچ مین آئی لرن لاٹ آنسرز دا کویشچن In, in Japanese, there is a word gaijin, which, you know, stands for invader or outsider. And right. it has always in, you know, indicated the extra. And Japan was a very isolated country at a point of time. So if Hindu project, we and the only piece of land which relates to Japan in that sort of isolation is India, because Hindus, you know, is a I part of religious it. scripture, cannot go outside India, not supposed to go to see. Uh, the only other religious scripture which forbids going to see is Islam, so we are related in that sort of thing. Anyhow, that's a discussion for another time before we get a blast from you think coming our way. Uh, the question I had was, uh, at, um, at freedom's limit, if we come to that book, uh, you have discussed in the first chapter, and once you're giving examples, and because my forte is script writing, 
it, uh, you gave an example of Hertz locker when you are describing. Locker, huh? yeah. So, so, and and you have this. Uh, I don't know how to say it, but the sample size normally because you refer when you go to the novels, you refer Lela Bulela in novels. So it's mostly female creators that you are referencing. Is it, is it a conscious choice or not? And how is Hurt Locker, you know, uh, confirming your thesis when you're saying about the new Islam? How, how does Hurt Locker, uh, you know, conform to that? How, how is that example related? Those are two different questions, right? Yeah. Two parts. One. Just a second. Two parts or two questions? I mean, I, I want to know what the connection is. Is there a connection? Because I, I, okay, okay. And, I, and I'm not saying that critically. I, I just, because if there's, yeah, because if there's a connection, I, I don't want to miss it. Uh, didn't Catherine Bigelow make uh, Hurt Locker as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it a conscious? No, it wasn't a conscious choice. I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, the second half is all about Muhammad Hanif and Kumail Jazdeen and uh, yeah, that, that part is when you talk uh, painters, then there are male. But, no, but Hanif is not a painter. No, I, I'm saying that but, the majority of the creators that we choose, because I, the sample that I have seen, Laila Bulala, is a phenomenally you know, powerful women writer. And, how, 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 magar, magar, agar, 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 aap, uh, the, the second half of the book, all three examples are males. Nadeem Aslam, Muhammad Hanif, and Kumail Jalateen, right? So the first half is like, oh, it's totally random. I mean, it's in, in the sense that, honey, I mean, I wish there were. I mean, it would make me sound so much more interesting. But uh, you, you can take this from now on and, you know, claim it to be a conscious choice. No, 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 uh, it wasn't, and it, no, it was thematic, right? You know, the, what, what serves the argument, what doesn't, right? How does Hurt Locker choose uh, 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 the new Islam? No, I mean, what I was interested in the Hurt Locker, right, was more um, I, I wanted, and the I want to talk about post 9 11, right? But even pre 9 11, I want to talk about a kind of precursor to Zero Dark Thirty, right? Uh, which is this not this film about torture, right? And just may um, Pakistan be here, bandi torture kar rahi or feminist ban gaye hum sab kyunki bandi torture kar rahi hai, suddenly it's all cool because look, women torture too, so. Whatever. Anyway, it's very it's a very critical reading, right? Magar hurt locker me it I mean I was also trying to talk about Iraq, right? But I was actually trying to talk about the American imagination. Because you know that chapter is very critical of the American Empire. Right? So what I wanted to know, right, was what I wanted to think about was ke ye kya imagination hai jo Har taraf se sirf threat dekhti hai. The Amriki imagination, right? And which then allows the world then to be turned into something that can be pulverized, right? And Hurt Locker really gives you that, right? Because when Bigelow talks about ke matlab har taraf se sniper aare, mm -hmm. right? And so what I was interested in was ke jo torture ka jo, jo sara hai ya jo uh, abu ghraib mein hua, right? And part of what I wanted to say was, um, that that was a product of that psychology, right? That 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 in some sense that the American and I talk about uh, uh, two histories, right? And then I'm talking about them in in, in the current book as well. And um, um, uh, 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 one is that um, the the slave history that torture is part of the American psyche because torturing slaves is part of the American psyche, right? And I'm not the first person to say that. Hazel Carvey talked about lynching photographs and can, compared Abu Ghraib pictures to them. But but there was also the other sense, right, which is that the Native American problem, right, the problem, according to the Americans, okay, up Saudi Westerns, they can, right? Yeah, there's this lone Gora 
not savior. No, no, no. Lone gora in the middle of an exposed place. Or kahi se bhi threat aa sakti hai. I'm talking about the hurt locker, visually, right? So Hartanas and Catherine Bigelow talks about being in Iraq. And look, the threat can come from anywhere. Right? So if the entire population is a threat, or kahi se bhi aa sakti hai, to aap kisi ko bhi maar sakte hai na? To aap ki phir koi differentiation ki aap pe, aap pe, aap ko koi pressure hi nahi hai na? Ke aap, aap, aap ko kisi ki insaniyat dekhne ki zarurat hi nahi hai, kyunke har admi aap ko maar sakta hai. So everybody is potentially a, your murderer. And if that is your imagination, right, there is no innocent person. So what I was trying to imagine, right, was that the American imperium, in that sense, is fundamentally predicated on the idea, right, of everybody else's lack of innocence and the American exceptional innocence the exceptionalism of American innocence, which has to be constantly renewed, right? So it was about American exceptionalism. And then in that, Islam becomes enfolded because Islam is the new enemy, right? But then Muslims kind of contribute to that by allowing themselves to be read through that lens. That was part of the argument. I mean, it's a very reductive version of the book, but, but that is kind of part of it. So Hurt Locker was just a kind of, let's say one example, what Iraq mein kya kiya hai? But I really wanted to connect it back to a very long American way of thinking that had to do with the Native Americans and that had to do with the African Americans and with the slave, slave, with the slave owning society. And I have to say very straight up that my primary interlocutor at that moment and from whom I learned a lot on this question was R.A. Judy, who is one of the leading black scholars in America because I was in deep and intense conversation with him. He's written Disforming the American uh, canon, the African Arabic American slave narrative, and sentient flesh. And so I'm talking to somebody who both knew, I mean, who knows obviously African American and black uh, a study back backwards, but also who knows American studies backwards, was, was a real gift because I'm not an Americanist, right? Right. So, so just a postscript before we go to Palmship, yeah. the, the, the comparison is when Jom Luk Baat Kare, she talks about Hurt Locker, which is an Anglesey film, which is in which you see American Sipahi who are in Iraq ki galiyon ke andar, aur, uh, she makes a very interesting argument that uh, they have shown that in the center of one man is standing in front of him, and he is in front of him. And this is why it is so interesting, because if you बर्तानवी लिटरेचर पढ़ें जब वो ट्राइबल एरियाज में गए तो आप रोडियार्ड किपलिंग को पढ़ेंगे तो वहां आपको वही फीलिंग नजर आएगी कि पहाड़ों के درمیان अब सेकंड अफगान वॉर के बाद वो जो एक लोन इंग्लिश डॉक्टर वापस आ रहा है वो सेम इमेज आपको यहां नजर आएगा और अगेन अब ये मैच हो जाता है क्योंकि फिल्म शॉर्ट ऑफ मेरा सब्जेक्ट है अगर आप आज देखें तो हिंदुस्तान जो है वो एक फिल्म बनाता है केसरी के नाम से जिसमें आप देखते हैं कि ए और जो एक एक्चुअल इंसिडेंट पे बेस्ड है कि एक सिख कंपनी है जिसमें सोना सतरा सिपाही है उनको हर तरफ से हजारों कबाइलियों ने घेर लिया है और वो एक इकलौता पोस्ट जो है वो एक सिंबल है ब्रेवरी का और वो जो कबाइली हैं वो उसको मिटाने के दरपे और उनकी जो हीरोइक डेथ है अब ये याद रखिए कि उस जमाने में जब ये लोग मरे थे और इनको विक्टोरिया क्रॉस पूरी यूनिट को मिला था तो ये हिंदुस्तान के हीरो नहीं थे हिंदुस्तान के हीरो वो कबाइली थे जो इस खित्ते के रहने वाले आजादी के लिए जिद्दोजहद कर रहे थे ये वो सेम आर्गुमेंट है जो हम लोग अक्सर आज के दौर में सुनते हैं कि सिकंदर को हम लोग यूलोजाइज करते हैं सिकंदर के नाम पे बच्चों का नाम रखते हैं जबकि इस खित्ते का हीरो पोरस है जो एतजाज हसन इंडस सागर में तो ये एक फंडामेंटल रिलेशनशिप जो कॉलोनाइजर और कॉलोनाइज्ड का है उसको डॉक्टर सादिया जो है वो अपनी किताब में हर्ट लॉकर और जीरा थर्टी की जो मिसाल है उस प्रोग्रेसिवली दोनों को एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए इस्तेमाल करती हैं जो कि अगर आप पढ़े एट फ्रीडम्स लिमिट में तो बहुत दिलचस्प कमेंट्री है पोस्ट 911 एक्चुअली uh, इन्होंने तो जो वर्ड यूज किया वो 1990s में जो न्यू इस्लाम की बर्थ हुई पोस्ट रुशदी अफेयर एंड गल्फ वॉर एंड सब कुछ और उसके درمیان एक स्टॉप आता है 911 का और उसके बाद ही आगे चलती हैं तो uh, जैसे इनके नॉवेल द एम्प्टी रूम की बात हुई तो अगर आप इनकी बुक फ्रीडम्स लिमिट को पढ़ना चाहें तो उसके अंदर इस मेजर थीम को टच करें Okay. You know, I, I, I do want to say, I mean, we need to talk about the script thing because that is, I know, I was talking about the script, 
अगली किताब में मैं मैं ये अफगान वाली बात एंड ब्रिटिश के बारे में मैं बहुत रिसर्च करती हूँ एंड अबाउट द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द अफगान एज द ट्राइबल राइट एंड एज द अफगान एज द अनडिफीटेबल विच देन गेट्स यूज द ब्रिटिश डू इट एंड एल्फिंग From Scotland. True. It 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 is and it's not. It is and it's not because the research I've been doing is, it is about a it is about Alexander, but it actually turns out that a lot of it has to do with what was happening in England at the time, which yeah. has to do with Scotland, yeah. and it yeah. actually has to do that. What they do is that they take the whole Scottish. what they were doing to the scots in culloden in 1707 yeah. and the highland clearances because the, the the scots were considered undefeatable so what they did was and this one i'm trying doing in my current book right and 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 mujhe kuch nahi aata tha ye bhi khuda talan hai jaise because she has these scottish references and yeah. five flies in the mist so it turns out that um and she has references to walter scott in five flies Okay, not in 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 the Urdu version as far as I can remember. So what I, it turns out that before the British would send the Angres, the English would send um, um, uh, their sons to India, the Scots would, because after unification in 1707, I think it was 1707, um, the Scots were very very poor. The Scottish gentry were very poor. So and but they were very educated because of the Scottish Enlightenment. So Onone. ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी में स्कॉट्स पढ़े हुए थे तो एल्फिंस्टन वगैरह ने तो एल्फिंस्टन राइट्स वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट ऑफ हंस एंड राइट एंड सो पार्ट ऑफ इट वाज जो जो स्कॉट स्कॉटलैंड में हाइलैंडर्स के बारे में कहा जाता था ना वो उन्होंने सब अफगान पे डाल दिया और पश्तून पे भी पठानों पे भी कह दिया पश्तून पे कह दिया राइट तो द इनवेंसिबल पश्तून बट द इंटायर मॉडल एंड आई जस्ट यूज्ड टू बी माय हंस आई रोड अबाउट दिस एट वन पॉइंट एंड देन गॉट टोटली कंफर्म कि एक्चुअली the entire model of the invincible pashtun and of the invincible afghans came from the highlanders the scottish highlanders and it had everything to do with the english antipathy to the highlanders and to, with the highland clearances because the english absolutely destroyed the scots and the scottish highlands right and the scots i mean the scots are still angry about it so our entire model of the north and and that got resuscitated by curzon who's a big figure in my book because at one point afghanistan became um imagined as a buffer zone against russia in the great game which kipling is also playing with in kim and so our military this is my speculation inherits that notion in its concept of strategic depth because it take, basically takes that british idea of afghanistan as a permanent buffer zone from the british so strategic depth is it's is kind of self defeating because the british idea was that the threat comes from the west and the buffer zone is basically holding it okay. the idea of strategic depth is that the threat comes from the east and you will fall back sure. on that but, but, so, but, but, so it's a contrast like sure. let's uh, well, but Shane, i think we're are we almost out we'll have one more question then we'll go to the audience if if that works oh no no actually yeah yeah because i was just reading the section that you got to written on caledonia yeah uh, on scotland yeah My oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. Um, so I think I'll just end with. Um, so you offer in this essay a number of provocations. I think to <laughs> <So> <laughs> a few, me, just know, a few, just just a few, a smattering of provocations. Something that you did a little earlier on in the essay, which I thought was really interesting. If I can just get to that, it's page two seventy five. Um, You're mumbling, madam. Sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to find. Um. the correct paragraph all right so in this essay you also say um so i'm just going to read it out to you it is tempting to read the question of trans creation a problem of conversion by by way of latin transformation by way of coleridge translation and reconciliation by way of lal as an as as providing an allegory of the problem of the foundations of the post colonial nation state put boldly can the bad produce the good In other words, can a decolonization predicated on colonial taxonomy and fully shot through through with the heavily taxonomized epistemology provide a generative emancipation 
or is it likely to continue to destroy a society as the taxonomy continues to manifest, producing more division and devastation? And I think this also relates to the point that you're saying that maybe um, River of Fire was also meant to be providing a critique of Hindutva and, you know, sort of the discontents of post-colonialism, if you will, or one, some of the discontents of post-colonialism. So I was just wondering if you could speak to that question, the, the series of questions that you posed in that paragraph a little bit, to conclude. Yeah. So, I am Urdu not to speak Urdu, because I paragraph not speak Urdu. I can't speak Urdu. I can't speak Urdu. So, um, um, so partly what I was getting at was, okay, the question is, the translation you had to uh, love Quratulan heaven is the Malkia tha river of fire kelia who translation tha, right? A wola zunonelia tha Prashatam Lal se joke Bengali romanticist tha or jo translate kar patia tha and I'm not sure he's live. Uh, jo translate kar the Hindu texts ko Angrezi mein, magar romanticist tha to I think he got it from Coleridge or Bengali. Uh, Bengali Nationalism was infused with romanticism. We now know. Um, Coleridge got it from Leibniz, um, the philosopher. Anyway, so that, that that's just me getting kind of interested Coleridge in got it from me? Leibniz, okay. the pr philosopher. So that's just me getting interested in random stuff. But my question colonialism has totally racialized us. Or divide because they divide and rule. जब हम कहते हैं कि किया तो कैसे किया, right? I mean, मतलब कहते तो हैं, but often we don't know what that means, right? ठीक है, but there were various various strategies to this, right? They some of it was के जैसे बंगाल को divide कर दिया, right? क्यों किया? I mean, now when you look at cousins' words and you look at some of the memos, and I've looked at them in the British Library. So to saf saf ye ki agar Hindu or Muslim unite honge, so they they're harder to fight, right? So the aja. Then ek tarah se is tarah se bhi kia ki representational politics, right? Aisi hai ki agar Muslim ko kuch words de dein, ab Hindu ko different words de dein, different different uh, as separate electorates bhi kar dein, to to then your investments are different, right? Political, aapko, um, um, your your political uh, benefits are tied to your identity in very particular ways. So I actually think of it as a as the precursor to what the Americans now call gerrymandering. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean this is this came to me recently. I was very proud of myself. I was like, yes. Anyway, so ye, ye bhi kiya. Aja, Revenant ruin make a licking use of anime. North South could you divide care racial lines? KB Aryan Dravidian divide. Acha Kabi Kabi Musalmano, Kadia Kamusalmanja, Alexander Kitanate. Kabi Kadia Kanate, Kabi Kadia Kamusalman, Ham Musamano Kitana. We are like, we are the returning Alexander. You know, so it was just this, this constant kind of turning people into types. And Heather has this wonderful passage in Kadariana where she talks about the Muslims embracing this. And the Hindus embracing it too, but like the Muslims embracing this taxonomy okay, um, and becoming like that. Like, like the we, the, the Indians basically, the South Asians embraced this way of being described. We accepted those descriptions. So my question was, right, when so decolonization happens, we take out what did she say in particular about that? Like, as in, and, and you're saying that she said that they embraced that taxonomy. I mean, that she, that she like performs it. Yeah, she performs it. All right, she okay. performs it. I mean, it, it's. It, I mean, I, that's my yeah. reading of it, right? I mean, she says. Um, 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 I mean, I can show you the passage, right? Yeah. I mean, it's quoted somewhere, and I think neither Greek nor Indian, but, 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 she. Um, um, but my question was, ke, जब आपने अंग्रेजों को निकाल दिया तो डीकॉलोनाइजेशन हो रही है बट और आपकी नेशन स्टेट भी है तो मगर आपका जो स्ट्रक्चर्स हैं नॉलेज के आपकी जो सोच है 
एपिस्टेमोलॉजी का मुझे ट्रांसलेशन नहीं पता कोई देना चाहता है तो मैं बिल्कुल देने को तैयार हूँ एपिस्टेमिक का प्लीज डेस्परेटली तो जो मगर आपकी जो सोच है ना और जो आपकी जो जो सारा जो स्ट्रक्चर है सोच का वो तो आपने फुल फुल इनहेरिट कर लिया राइट तो आपकी जो जो आपने मुल्क बनाया जो 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 ममालिक बनाए और वो जो जो आई कॉल दैम एट वन पॉइंट आई रोड दिस पीस दैट नेवर गॉट पब्लिश विच वॉज गोइंग टू बिकम अ नॉवल एंड देन इट आई लॉस द पेजेस आई थिंक इट वॉज पोस्ट डिवोर्स I lost a lot of things post divorce and I think these pages are part of them. I lost lots of books as well and probably half my mind but that's a different story. <laughs> so my point was that you know wo jo tha ke wo bhi the pehle pehle hi thodi kiski hui thi but the point is jo wo uh usme maine likha hai you know artichoke or onion ask these nations we keep like proliferating nations. Ye matlab jaise chhil rahi hai na jaise pyaas ki tarah. Ye sorry. Um and I'm clearly like fighting with the mic but uh but the point was that ye agar ye hamari soch hai agar soch nahi badli to mulk to bana liya aapne mulk mulk mein hoga kya ye socha aapne kal right aur wo kyunki nahi socha hai to abhi tak yahi chal raha hai ab india mein dekhiye kya ho raha hai yahan pe kya ho raha hai bangladesh mein kya hua bangladesh bana kaise So my question was, can the bad produce the good? The question was, we still. ये नहीं सिर्फ कि हम अंग्रेज बनना चाहते हैं वो तो आप डिफेंस में जाइए आप मुझे देखिए ना मैंने खिंचाई हो रही है पिछले दो घंटे से मैंने कुर्दू नहीं आती आपको तो वो ठीक है. I just said it once, you know, दो दो घंटे से खिंचाई. You didn't say it once. अभी रिकॉर्ड हो चुका है. वैसे एपिस्टेमोलॉजी के लिए जो लव्स मैंने सुना है वो मस्तरे फिकर था. मस्तरे फिकर अच्छा बस भाई जब तक बात करेंगे भाई कम से कम तीन दफा तुमने बोला था अभी हम रिकॉर्डिंग देखेंगे पहाड़ा जो ठीक खिंचाई हो रही है होनी भी चाहिए मगर मैं ये कह रही हूँ कि मगर और the point is ke my question was the, the the bigger issue is not the language issue right the bigger issue is the thinking the bigger issue is the racial thinking the racial the ethnic thinking the structure of division right yeah. how do we actually think about who we are as people as beings as humans we've never addressed that question right how do we think of ourselves in terms of division we still have structures of caste and we say we're a muslim country right we still have structures of caste and some of those are formalized through the british the f- british fixed notions of caste the indians have shown this right so my question is precisely once you fix the taxonomy the taxonomy meaning the div- the way of dividing the world into people according to certain types right and you don't undo that what is your nation going to look like right the question is not whether you have a nation state or not right the question is what is the basis of the identities of the people within your country we've not resolved that question in pakistan in bangladesh in india right yeah. and it's a blood bath everywhere right so my question is can the bad produce the good was why has decolonization been such a damn catastrophe in so many quest- countries and my point is it's been a catastrophe because we because the epistemology has not been addressed right soch nahi badli hai right aur ye nahi hai ki angrezi bolte hain wo to bolte hain aur matlab aur aur ek aur ye nahi ki angrez banna chahte hain wo to hai right and that that is I mean that's that our elites particularly have a, have a certain desire to be anglophone and I don't mean the language I mean wanting to be English. the culture everything. yeah the culture the everything right and have a completely idiotically idealized notion of the west that there's no getting around right and I I mean all my work deconstructs that but the question is how do we think about who we are and that we have naturally addressed अब जो बात डॉक्टर सादिया अभी कहनी थी उसमें एक बहुत दिलचस्प बात उन्होंने की कि अंग्रेज जो है उसने टाइप कास्ट किया अगर आपको कभी अंग्रेज डिप्टी कमिश्नर हर जिले का एक गजट लिखता था और हर साल वो पब्लिश होता था और वो आज भी आपको आर्काइव में से मिल जाएंगे तो आप कभी गुजरावाला का या शेखोपुरा का गजट उठा के पढ़िए तो उसमें हर कौम और हर जात की एक तफसील लिखी होती है 
जिसमें पूरी तरह लिखा होता है कि इस कौम के लिए ये ये पेशे मुनासिब हैं ये मार्शल रेस है ये जो ताजर पेशा हैं ये किसान पेशा हैं इनसे ये काम लिए जा सकते हैं ये काबिल भरोसा है यानी सरदार अहमद यार खान खरल ने अठारह सौ सतावन बगावत की थी और खरल बट्टू फतियाने उनके साथ थे तो आखिर तक उन्नीस सौ तेईस के भी जो गजट है उसमें कमिश्नर ने यही लिखा कि बट्टू काबिल भरोसा कौम नहीं है इनको कभी इकतदार नहीं दिया जा सकता ये मौका मिलने पर गद्दारी करते हैं और अलमिया ये है कि अगर आप आज भी पाकिस्तान के फैसला साज लोगों से जाके पूछेंगे कि अंग्रेज ने इस खत्े पर क्यों इतनी कामयाबी से हुकूमत की कहेंगे अंग्रेज को कौमों की पहचान बहुत अच्छी थी अंग्रेज लोगों को पैडिग्री के मुताबिक डील किया करता था वो रोमांटिक नोशन आज तक हम लोगों ने अपने अंदर रखा है तो आई फाउंड इट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट यू ब्रॉट दैट आउट बिकॉज़ इट्स अ इट्स अगेन वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट आई एम एक्सप्लोरिंग इन माय वर्क एक आखिरी सवाल व्हिच आई वांटेड टू आस्क हर व्हेन आई वाज रीडिंग योर बुक दैट केम टू माय माइंड एंड मे बी यू फाइंड इट अ बिट टू पर्सनल देन यू आर फ्री नॉट टू आंसर इट यू राइट अबाउट योर मैटरनल ग्रैंडफादर दैट ही वाज योर इंस्पिरेशन बट एट द एंड ही डिड नॉट गेट व्हाट ही डिजर्व सो आई जस्ट वांटेड टू नो द द बैक स्टोरी टू So to that part, and then when we can move on to the audience. It's too personal. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to. I want to read you something from Akadaria. So. Uh, that, that's the transfusion. Yes, from yeah. the uh, sorry, from the river fire, right? To understand the relation between this is me, and then I'll tell you what what Heather says. To understand the relation between knowledge, origin, space, and historical loss in Heather's writing, it is important to turn to a moment in the river of fire where. Having skipped millennia, we are in the British colonial period. Here, unlike the swirling space of India and West Asia, circa 300 BCE, we are in a rigidly taxonomized world, and a character called Cyril Ashley stands and shouts at a ferryman, "Hello, Abdul, listen." This is Heather, and the narrator goes on to say, "All lower-grade Muslims were called Abdul by the Ferengis, foreigners. This was one of their arrogant habits after they became victorious." Me. So ingrained does this colonial structure of naming and typing, where every Muslim and Christian and Hindu is the same as every other of his perceived kind, become that a hundred years later in an upper class household. And I quote: "Gulfishar's cook was called Husseini. Most cooks were called that. Washermen were known as Nathu. All bearers answered to the name of Abdul." Sizes were usually Ganga Adin. Nightclub violinists were known as Tony. Fathers had such names as Syed Taqir Azza Bahadur or Aftab Chand Chand Rai Zada. There were many houses like Gulfish and down the road. The same kind of exceedingly refined people lived there. In them, they all had motor cars, and their daughters went to convent schools and IT colleges, and their sons studied for the competitive examinations of the imperial covenanted services. Okay, guess that this is Heather. Okay. And and, and if Abdul makes you recall Victoria and Abdul, so it's, it's your own choice. <laughs> Let's uh, have uh, something from the audience. I think do, do they have been listening to us for a good part of two hours. So let's. I apologize. <laughs> Are you having to listen to us? Yeah. मैं तो उर्दू मेरी अंग्रेजी है अच्छा तो मैंने ये नॉवेल मुझे थोड़ी देर के लिए मिला था तो उतनी देर में जितना मैं पढ़ सकी थी मैं ये नहीं कहूँगी कि मैंने पूरा पढ़ा क्योंकि वो इतना तफसील से लिखा हुआ है कि उसमें बुंदों का रंग और चप्पल के साइज और दुपट्टे का चुनट तक वही जो एक ही नॉवेल है इसमें अच्छा। <laughs> रूम्स रूम का तो मुझे वो मैंने उस वक्त भी तनवीर से कहा था कि जब मैं ये नॉवेल पढ़ रही थी तो मुझे ए आर खातून और रजिया भट्ट और डाइजेस्टो में लिखी हुई खातन की ढेरों उर्दू कहानियाँ जो सेवेंटीज में इसी तरह लिखी जाती थी और फिर वही नरेटिव स्टाइल के कैरेक्टर से आगे नहीं बढ़ रहा है बल्कि वो जो राइटर है वो खुद कहानी सुना रही है और कहानी में वो इतनी तफसील बता रही है इतनी तफसील बता रही है और इसके बाद फिर जितने किरदार हैं उसके ससुराल के यानी उसकी दोनों नंदे भी उसका उसकी सास भी उसके ससुर भी सब वो उस बेचारी दुल्हन के खिलाफ साजिश कर रहे हैं कि दोनों मियाँ बीवी को करीब नहीं आने दें बिल्कुल 
और वो जो शोहर उल्लू का पट्टा है वो उसको उस साजिशों को बिल्कुल नहीं समझ रहा है और और लाके उसने उसको बहिष्टी जेवर पकड़ा दिया है और हम सबको पता है कि बहिष्टी जेवर जो है कितना एंटी फेमिनिस्ट वो दस्तावेज है पेश करने के लिए क्या क्या कहते हैं कि तुम फेमिनिस्ट क्यों हुए हो तो मैं कहती हूँ कि मैंने बहिष्टी जेवर पढ़ लिया था इसलिए हुई हो लेकिन मैं खुद उसी सोसाइटी से मिडिल क्लास से माइग्रेटेड यूपी की फैमिली से और मैंने भी देखा है कि ठीक है खानदानों में छो, जब छोटी मोटी साजिशें होती है लेकिन इस तरह सारे किरदार को इस एक्सट्रीम पे बुरा होना और उस लड़की का इस कदर मतलब अभी भी मैं ड्रामे देखती हूँ तो मुझे बहुत गुस्सा आता है जब वो ये दिखाती हैं कि वो जहाँ उसको बोलना है वहाँ वो कम नहीं बोलती और जहाँ सॉरी उससे क्योंकि मुझे उस पर बहुत ही बात बहुत अच्छी बात है आप अगर दो गाल में आपने दो मिनट में जब गई तो मतलब बिल्कुल जो मैं करवाना चाह रही थी वो हो गया ना हम नहीं हम लोग की गालियां भी इतनी है कब बस मरदूद और नमाकुल तक उनका बच्चा भी बोला ना तो ये जो है ये क्या बहुत मसनूयत नहीं है इसके अंदर मतलब एक खातून से जो आप जितनी पढ़ी लिखी है जो जिसने सारे दुनिया का अदब पढ़ा हुआ है और फिर आप करत हैदर से भी मुतासर हैं तो करत हैदर का तो वन लेयर का नॉवेल कभी नहीं होता और वो अगर आपने पूरी नॉवेल पढ़ी नहीं है तो आपको वन लेयर कहाँ से नजर आ रहा है वो कह रही है कि हमने उसको देखा जितना देखा जा सकता था लेकिन दो आंखों से कितना देखा जा सकता था इसे मैं तो शुरू से उन खातन डाइजेस्ट और खातन के उसकी बात मैं नहीं कह रही वो तो दैट पार्ट ऑफ इट एब्सोल्युटली नहीं मेरे और, आगे हाँ. मेरी बात तो खत्म नहीं हुई मेरे ऊपर खुल गया कि आपने कहा कि मैं एंटी मैरिज प्लॉट है ये तो क्या आपने जहन में रख के लिखा है कि बहुत ज्यादा इतना एक्सट्रीम करे के जो पढ़े वो एंटी मैरिज हो जाए कोई इसमें वो एंटी मैरिज नहीं and 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 that's also misreading of what i said but that's okay uh pehli baat ye hai ki puri puri duniya ka adab padha bhi hai aur padhaya bhi hai that's true um i was actually thinking of richardson not a yar khatun i mean you're welcome to yar khatun that's fine um and i was also thinking of very specific instances of things that i know of people that i know and what they went through right सो so, बहुत सारे लोगों ने मुझे खत भी लिखे हैं कि थैंक यू सेम सो मच फॉर राइटिंग अबाउट अस राइट सो फेमिनिज्म इट डिपेंड्स ऑन व्हाट योर डेफिनेशन ऑफ फेमिनिज्म इज आई हैव बीन अ लाइफ लॉन्ग फेमिनिस्ट अम एंड अम आई हैव लिव्ड माय लाइफ विद अ काइंड ऑफ फेमिनिज्म दैट मोस्ट पीपल आई वुड इमेजिन कांट इवन बिगिन टू इमेजिन राइट सो बिकॉज़ आई फॉट बैटल्स दैट मेनी पीपल कांट इमेजिन हियर and in the united states as well right so and i don't and i say that not defensively but with a certain amount of uh, fierceness right um i uh, you know i mean i am a left feminist of a very particular order and i've paid dearly for that so i take i i will crumble on a lot of things but not on my feminism and i certainly won't take any critique of it what i will say is the question is right the the idea of agency right and the question of what the novel was doing right so the novel of course changes over the course of the novel so uh, um is it miserable are the good characters or the bad characters I and mean, as as a as a literary critic i would say uh, never give a reading of a novel until you've read the whole thing it's just a bad idea um uh but what i would also say is that um because the idea changes as does the novel in book 3 dramatically because there are a lot of other characters who come in and and uh, it becomes about radicalism it becomes about feminism it becomes about the choices huh there's a lot of activism there's a lot of activism there's a lot of feminism there's a lot of choices right and of course part of what the novel is trying to do 
is have a face-off, if you will. Let me give you a film, a cinematic metaf uh, a metaphor right there, it, between um, Bahishti Zevar and Mirata Larus on, on the one hand, because I actually don't think that Abdin Nazir Ahmed is the, is the liberal that he's made out to be, um, on the one hand, and, and radicals like Isma Chaftai and Purtala and Heather and even Teraniga, who's mentioned, and who come in more towards the end of the book, right? So that the, the novel is doing both. It's also doing something else, which is, and Heather writes about this in Dastani Heather Begul, among other things, which is that the Urdu novel is hugely influenced by figures like Samuel Richardson, who is mentioned in, in the novel. Samuel Richardson was um, huge. Um, I detest Samuel Richardson. I find him despicable. And, um, but it's also obvious that people like Dipti Nazir Ahmed were reading him. Right? So Azgari in Mirat al is clearly partly a Pamela figure. Right? And this complete burden upon UP women, that they, and I detest Azgari more than I do Azgari. Right? I loathe Azgari. Why? Because Azgari, who is meant to be the perfection of UP women, right? Right. Or Ajkal, but class as a model, right? And I know women who take Azari as a model. concubines Urdu आपकी बड़ी बहन तो जैसी भी है मगर छोटी जाएंगी और आप जो है सीधी बात नहीं करेंगी और टेढ़ी टेढ़ी मतलब मोड़ मोड़ के बात करेंगी और कभी और कभी कंफ्रंट नहीं करेंगी अपने मियां को और मियां जो है और जो मियां के लिए आप मगर आप और आप खानदान की जो जो क्या कहते हैं इकोनॉमिक सिचुएशन भी बदल देंगी आपने पूरा खानदान भी संभाल लिया आपने शादियां भी करवा दी सबकी और क्योंकि आप इतनी और आपके ससुर आपको भाई भी बोलेंगे और उसके बाद यह भी होगा कि और फिर आपके जो मियां हैं जो मतलब पता नहीं कहां बैठे हैं पता नहीं कितनी औरतों के साथ वो आपकी वर्चुअस पता नहीं कब देख के 20 साल के बाद खुद बखुद ठीक हो जाएंगे आई डोंट थिंक ऑफ अ मोर मिजरेबल बुक देन दैट एज अ फेमिनिस्ट तो बेशती देवर तो जो है एट लीस्ट बेशती देवर इज ऑनेस्ट इन इट्स नास्टीनेस Mirata Larus is devastating because it puts all of the pressure on the woman to transform everything. And then you'll be rewarded because you're such a powerful creature. But guess what? You're being treated really badly and your husband's totally neglecting you and he's too busy with uh, off with of those other women. But we're going to reward you because your father-in-law loves you because guess what? You got like all of us married off. Nummy. Right? So part of what I was interested in was that. Right? But where are we getting it from? We're getting it from Victorian England, or rather 18th century England. And that was the history I was really interested in. Right? And Taira, of course, internalizes this. And I know women who have. Right? So are there positive characters and negative characters and all that? I mean, that's just a theory of reading. Should there be and should there not be? I mean, or a theory of writing. Right? So But then on top of that, uh, so, so is it a dark novel? Yeah, sure. I mean, do I take that as a criticism? I mean, it might be intended as one, but I don't take it as one, right? Um, and then as far as Bajia and so on, I mean, yeah, I mean, that was actually very much part of the um, uh, part of the world of the that I was trying to recreate. But I also want to say very, very simply, right, that feminism is not just about pretending or imagining resistance. Feminism is also about telling the truth and honoring the lives of women who have actually had to live lives that we don't want to imagine. I left and refused. And I live a freedom that many people here can't even begin to imagine. It's not always a happy freedom because it comes with a huge cost. But I have had people write to me from all over the world, including a young man whose letter I read about his mother, saying, thank you for writing this because you wrote about my life and my mother's life. And he wrote to me from the Netherlands, right? So he said, thank you, right? It is what it is.
I think there is a misunderstanding of the word anti-marriage plot. Anti-marriage plot necessarily is not anti-marriage. Marriage plot is a literary technique which you are trying to... Sorry, use. yes, I forgot that. That, that part was actually uh, a misunderstanding of the word basically because marriage plot is a way that we use in literature. Mein istamal karte. Anti-marriage plot means that this is anti-marriage. No, no, you're absolutely right. Sorry, I forgot that part of the question. Uh, marriage plot is... 18th century mein america angrezon ne richardson ne khaas taur pe shuru kiya tha aur marriage plot ka maqsad sara ye tha ke shaadi ke through har cheez resolve ho jayegi and it's an 18th century bourgeois convention right so it's basically a romance plot right jo usse pehle hota nahi tha anti marriage plot ka matlab ye hai ki jo kitab khatam hoti hai marriage ke sath ke sab kuch खुश हो गया सब खत्म हो गया अब अब अगले दिन सब हमेशा के लिए पता नहीं क्या बच्चे पैदा करके फूल करेंगे आई फाउंड योर बुक वेरी फेमिलियर मतलब व्हाट एवर वाज हैपनिंग इन द नॉवेल इट वाज क्वाइट फेमिलियर आई मीन इट्स देयर इन द आवर सोसाइटी सो आई विल नॉट चैलेंज इट एज अ यू नो इट्स अ वेरी इट इज अ एज यू सेड दैट वी हैव टू also portray the um, what's the reality of uh, women in our society so that, you know, well, i don't mind the world. challenge i just don't i mean i i i, I mean i i want to be very clear right i mean i, I wasn't getting defensive about it if you don't like the book that's fine i mean what i'm trying to say is that i don't think that there's any uh, I, i'm also making a theoretical point right the i the, the, the writers like i there's no there's no like there's no obligation to be positive i'm not ronald reagan i don't think we all have to smile that's my thought anyway sorry aap sawal karne wali thi but ab sawal to main darasal kulturan heather ke bare mein zyada sunne ke liye aayi thi lekin zyada baatein dusri hui kyunki jo aapke jo articles hain um wo to because you said that you are going to talk mainly about those articles and i i so i, I, like, I, I answered the questions i was asked yeah, yeah. I, i take <laughs> the blame for it maine empty room ki baat zyada ki main mazrat kar leta lekin aap ab yahan par hai to to ye pura bada interesting hai to usme kisi ne ek aur question bhi uthaya tha ki ke urdu ka jo text hai aap ka darya ka wo four quartets se shuru hota hai lekin english ka nahi hota to ये उन्होंने क्यों उसमें से निकाल दिया इसके बारे में भी बहुत सारी मतलब बातें करते हैं कि क्यों निकाल दिया तो व्हाट डू यू थिंक अबाउट डिड आई राइट अबाउट इट इन देयर आई डिड तो तो लल्लू जी लाल ने कहा प्राइवर में कि इसमें लिखा है इसमें कि छोड़ आई डोंट नो हाउ मच आई वुड अबाउट इट बट के 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 यावनी भाषा को छोड़ दो राइट तो माय स्पेकुलेशन इज तो जब कुमकुम संगारी ने पूछा कि तो, तो आ, आप लोगों को शायद पता होगा कि टी एस एल एट की, की फोर क्वार्टर का एक सेक्शन था जो फ्रॉम द ड्राई सैलवेज सेक्शन ट्रांसलेट करके उन्होंने उर्दू के आकबरिया में पुरुतुलन हैदर ने लगाया ना एपिग्राफ के एपिग्राफ को क्या कहते हैं उर्दू में इब्तदाइया अच्छा तो मगर उन्होंने ये किया कि अंग्रेजी वर्जन में से कोर्टेट्स को वो हटा दिया थी असलियत को तो कुमकुम नारी ने पूछा उनसे जो इंडियन क्रिटिक हैं कि क्या हुआ उस उस उसको तो उन्होंने जवाब दिया कि छुट गया होगा अस क्लासिक क्लासिक है दर रिस्पांस राइट वेरी क्लासिक बिकॉज she and everybody found this terribly terribly cryptic you know because she wouldn't answer questions directly like sab kehte hain na ki matlab jawab bade matlab ironic question ke diya karti thi to maine ye socha to phir maine jab ye lallu ji yaad wala padha na ki yavani bhasha ko chhod do right that at some level you know she was playing in the transcreation with this idea of when she said chhod gaya hoga she was playing with this idea that um um first she was ref- it, the joke was a joke about the about lallu ji lal ke chhod gaya hoga ke chhod like angrezi chhod diya right 
And I think the, the second thing was that at that point, she had sort of decided that Elliot was too conservative, which he was. He was very reactionary, right? So he, he just wasn't interesting anymore. But then also to have him back in the original wasn't what was interesting to her, that her a relationship with, had changed. That's my speculation, right? I, I don't know why, but but I'm more interested in in what she said about it, right? And, and I think that was actually her playing with آخری شب کے ہم سفر کا جو ترجمہ کیا انہوں نے تو اس میں دو چیپٹر پڑھا دیے گئے خیر مجھے تو جہاں سے وہ شروع ہوتا تھا وہ ناول بہت اچھا لگ رہا تھا یہ مصنف کی مرضی ہے کہ وہ کہاں سے پڑھ میں صرف یہ جاننا چاہتا ہوں کہ کیا وہ دو چیپٹرس پہلے اردو میں لکھے گئے تھے اور پہلے اشاعت میں آخری شب کے وہ نہیں شامل ہیں اور انگریزی میں پھر اس کو انہوں نے ترجمہ کر کے بڑھا دیا یہ انگریزی ایڈیشن کے لیے خاص طور پر لکھے گئے تھے اگر اردو میں رکھ لکھے گئے تھے تو مجھے نہیں معلوم مگر اردو کی جو اردو کی جو ناول کے جو ابتدا ہے وہ بہت خوبصورت ہے بہت خوبصورت بہت خوبصورت ہے انگریزی کی اتنی خوبصورت نہیں ہے یہ میں مانتی ہوں میرا خیال ہے کہ انگریزی میں لکھے گئے تھے اور اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ ہسٹری بدل رہی تھی جو میں نے جو آرٹیکلس لکھے ہیں اور جو میں نے جو چیپٹر لکھ رہی ہوں کہ بہت سسٹمیٹک ایڈیشن ہیں اور اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ انہوں نے پوری تاریخ بدل دی اور وہ نائنٹین سینچری میں واپس لے گئیں اسکاٹ لینڈ لے گئیں اور جو ایسٹ انڈیا کمپنی والی بات ہے وہاں سے آئی ہے جو ڈچ کالونائزیشن والی بات آئی ہے وہاں سے آئی ہے جو ڈچ کا ریفرنس ہے وہ امپورٹنٹ ہے کیونکہ پہلا جو جو پہلی ہندی گرامر لکھی گئی تھی وہ ڈچ کے بارے نے لکھی تھی وہ جو مجھے نہیں معلوم تھا اسکاٹ لینڈ کے بارے میں جو کہا جائے جو ایسٹ انڈیا کمپنی والے تھے وہ انہوں نے وہ کیلیڈونیا جو چیپٹر لکھا ہے تو ظاہر اسکاٹ لینڈ کو ظاہر اسکاٹ لینڈ والٹر اسکاٹ کو کوٹ کیا اور جو اردو ورژن میں دیپلی کو آخر میں انہوں نے نیگرو کہا یہ تم ایک خط آتا ہے جب کہا کہ یو ہیو بیکم اے نیگرو بیکاز دیپلی گوز ٹو ٹرین ڈیڈ آپ کو یاد ہے نا شروع میں انگریزی ورژن میں اس کا مطلب کیا ہے کہ کلونیلزم میں کوئی جو بھی گورا نہیں ہے وہ سب کالے ہو گئے رائٹ وچ آئی ایگری ود ایکچولی سم لیول رائٹ آئی نو لائک ہم سب گورا بن گورے بننا چاہتے ہیں مگر نہیں ہے رائٹ بٹ بٹ وٹ ہیپنز آئی تھنک ان بگننگ از کہ اگر آپ دیکھیں کہ جو کنیکشن کیا ڈھاکہ مینشن جو جو کیلٹو نے جو گھر کا نام ہے مگر جو کنیکشن ہے ود دی ادر مینشن جو ڈھاکہ میں ہیں no classical mansions to america and she connects them to the americas so i think what she's doing in the beginning is she's showing ke jo 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 india mein hua colonialism ke shuru wo wohi hai jo america mein ho raha hai so she's developing at the beginning what happens at the end that's my reading they phir urdu ke navelon ko mere khayal to ek aur edition bhi hona chahiye revised ya improved ya jo bhi ho دو ورژن ہونی چاہیے ایک جو ترجمے سے پہلے اور ایک انہوں نے اس کو اس طرح ایک ایک پیرے آنے سے پہلے ایک پیرے جانے کے بعد میرے خیال سے پتا ہے آپ بالکل صحیح کہہ رہے ہیں میرے خیال سے پتا نہیں کیا ہونا چاہیے کہ انگریزی ورژن کا اردو میں ترجمہ ہونا چاہیے اور اردو ورژن کا کوئی اور ترجمہ لٹرل انگریزی میں ہونا چاہیے تاکہ لوگ دیکھ سکیں گے کیا ہو رہا ہے کیونکہ اتنا شیز ڈوئنگ سو مچ ان بورڈ that we need now for serious scholarship to have translations of both. 
I completely agree. Maybe a chatter. Tell him a few. बहुत शुक्रिया आप शो इफ यू गो फॉर इट तो मैं एक्चुअली जनरली पूछना चाह रहा था कि तो आपका जो पहला आर्टिकल है दो आर्टिकल भेजे थे शायद पहले आर्टिकल में तो इट्स बेसिकली अ क्रिटिक ऑफ द ऑफ यूरोप राइट द बाउंड्रीज ऑफ यूरोप की आइडेंटिटी ऑफ यूरोप एक तरफ है दूसरे आर्टिकल में ये है कि पुरतल हैदर ने जो भी ट्रांसक्रिएशन किया था अपने नॉवल का उसमें एक डिकॉलोनाइजेशन की क्रिटिक राइट वो टैक्सोनॉमिक एक सोच है जो हमने अंग्रेजों से लिया है और जो एक कह सकते हैं कि मडर्निटी का एक हिस्सा है एक खसूसियत है मडर्निटी की कि मडर्निटी जो है लो लोगों को इस तरह तकसीम करता है सो आई गेस माई क्वेश्चन इज सॉर्ट ऑफ ये आपको लगता है कि इन इनके काम में इस ट्रांसक्रिएशन में इज देर अ क्रिटिक ऑफ मडर्निटी एंड अवर वट आई मीन वट Do you think is if not a taxonomic thinking, then what kind of conception of self? Because this thought, so, I mean, this is this kind of taxonomic thinking. So, you get in left, in right, in right, in right. Identitarianism, you get in America. Anti-racism, you get in America. You get in identitarianism, which is Islamism, you get in America. Nationalism, you get in America. So, what kind of imaginary do you think she's? reaching for in this i i do think she has i think that she does have a i mean she certainly has an analysis of identity but i think that she has a critique of identity too and i think that to find that critique of identity you need to go right back to the beginning of akadarya in the urdu version also right and i think that to me the moment is right jab gautam aur hari shankar ka aap naam dekhe na it's right there hari shankar is the buddhas Gautam is the Hindu, right? It's right there. It's all about the fluidity of identity. The book begins in fluidity. ठीक है ना? By the end of the book, it's gone. ठीक है? Right? So and on शुरू में it's all about uh, Buddhist philosophy and Hindu philosophy. और उर्दू वाली उर्दू वर्जन में जो इनको यकीन नहीं है कि मैंने पढ़ी पढ़ी है वो 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 कोई बात नहीं तो वो उर्दू वर्जन में जो जो फलसफा है बहुत लंबा है राइट बहुत लंबा है ना सर खप जाता है और बहुत मुश्किल जबान में बड़ा बड़ा मजा आया ना जो उर्दू जो मेरी उर्दू अभी तो ऐसे फातमा ने कहा कि उनकी अंग्रेजी मेरी उर्दू जैसी है बट बट मेरी उर्दू इससे भी लटियल थी तो मैंने हजर पढ़ने से पहले क्योंकि ऐसी हड्डी लगी है जब तो एक तरफ लगत बैठी है दूसरी तरफ हैदर बीच में मैं और एक एक पेज दो दो दिन राइट सो आप सोचें वो पढ़ के ना तो मतलब उर्दू आ गई इन द प्रोसेस बट जोक्स साइड द मडर्निटी इश्यू इज रियली इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज द बिगिनिंग राइट Hari Shankar, who has become the Buddhist, right? He's the is he, he, I mean he's got a Hindu name. Gautam, who's the Hindu, is the one who's questioning him, right? And it's very interesting. Because, I mean, you know, novelists they you know how do novelists give information about their thinking? How do novelists give theory? They do it through precisely moves like this. Right, so fluidity of identity is built into the very beginning, right? And what jo jo bhi jo hai dhyan pe or jo Hindu philosophy hai, or magar usme implicit jo Sufi philosophy bhi hai, right? Because zahir aur baatin ki jo antecedents hai in Hindu and Buddhist philosophy was shuru mein hai, right? And the the antecedents in Hindu and Buddhist philosophy are being played with, right? So she's also setting up, and that's why Hari Shankar. Is then in the Anglesey version called the Yavana, because she's setting up the the kind of precursors to Muslims in India, right? So I think she's she's actually trying to make identity fluid at the beginning, right? And show how that falls apart over time, right? Um, so when I you know and and again. Some people have argued again. Ahri Judy is one of the people I'm talking about. That, that we have to change the epistemic, the entire epistemic structure of modernity, and that actually means getting rid of identitarian thinking on all sides. The apologies on all sides. So, so I'm not taking up. I'm not, on the one hand, 
it, it's kind of interesting. I've been having this conversation with another colleague of mine, right? Because on the one hand, one has to work with the politics one has. So yes, I'll say I'm a leftist, or I'll say that what choice do we have if it's a it's a very, I mean, I've, I'm the former director of the Center for European Studies, and I have a critique of the EU, and I have a chapter on Europe in this current book, trying to take apart the Europe, Europe, right? So on the one hand, and I think the nation state is better than the EU at this point, right? But on the one hand, I have a critique on the nation state, but on the other hand, I'll say we have to stay with the nation state because that's all we have, right? So we live within modernity, right? But if we want to get past its problems, we really have to rethink everything. So how do we do both, right? Now, for me, literature is one of the places where you can do, where you actually can inhabit the space of both. Because literature is a space of the imagination, right? Where, where thinking the alternative is possible, even as you're living with the non-alternative. Thank you very much for joining us today. We have a very good time with them. We have talked about their novel, their book at Freedom's Limit. And the book that they are writing today is their primary thesis. I should give you the first time, but I said that I will tell you about three words. That their primary thesis is about Kuratulain Haider. Kuratulain Haider's two Shankar novel, Aakhir Shab Ke Hum Safar and Aag Ka Darya, Kuratulain Haider has translated himself. And to say that, इनकार किया और कहा कि ये ट्रांस क्रिएशन है ट्रांसलेशन नहीं है हिंदुस्तान में ये रिवायत रही है टेगोर ने भी अपने काम का खुद ही तर्जुमा किया था उस तर्जुमे पे ही उन्हें नोबेल इनाम मिला था लेकिन ये जो तर्जुमा है वाकई ये ट्रांसलेशन नहीं है क्योंकि उन्होंने दोबारा से दूसरी जबान के अंदर दूसरी जबान की हसासियत के मुताबिक उसको दोबारा से तकलीक किया है और इसीलिए उन्होंने लफ्ज ट्रांस क्रिएशन यूज किया है और इस इस फिनोमिन के ऊपर तहकीक कर रही है साबिया साहिबा और उन्होंने अपने दो आर्टिकल हम सबसे शेयर भी किए थे और आज हमें उसके बारे में काफी कुछ सुनने का भी मौका मिला तो आप लोगों का बहुत शुक्रिया कि आप लोगों ने वक्त निकाला यहाँ पे आए और एक आखिरी वजहत ये कि जो पुरानी जिस तरह इन्होंने पीटीवी के नाम बहुत देखे हैं तो पुराने बरतानवी टॉक शोज की एक ट्रेडिशन है कि होस्ट ने गेस्ट को तंग भी करना होता है और एक वो बैंटर का पार्ट करना होता है तो ये सिर्फ वो था आप ये मत सोचिएगा कि अभी जब कैमरा बंद होगा तो हम दोनों बताएगा लड़ेंगे लेकिन लेकिन इट वाज आई एंजॉयड इट थरली आई वाज नॉट अफेंडेड आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड क्योंकि आप देखें एक 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 बर्तन भी ट्रेडिशन भी है और एक यूपी का की चाय का भी ट्रेडिशन है और वो जब दोनों मिलते हैं तो फिर वो और भी जरा एम्पलीफाई हो जाता है इट वाज अ प्लेजर हैविंग यू एंड हैविंग पल्लवशेहर वो एडेड हर ओन इनसाइड्स थैंक